So what exactly are vulnerabilities? These are flaws in the software that we don't know about yet that could lead to an external attacker gaining access to your system. For the Cyber Grand Challenge, the game is focused on what we call memory corruption vulnerabilities. A buffer overflow is one type of memory corruption. Uh, a memory disclosure uh, vulnerability or a heap buffer overflow are all different types of memory corruption vulnerability. So a computer at its heart is a processor and some memory. In a modern computer, you know that you have a hard drive and you have RAM, which is memory, and you have the processor. So when a computer turns on, it reads the data, the code that needs to execute off of the hard drive into working memory, into the RAM module, because this is faster and the processor then interacts with it then. Uh, a buffer is simply a logical construct. It's a piece of memory that has been dedicated for one particular purpose by the programmer. So let's um, go over a classic stack-based buffer overflow. If I'm a program and uh, the first thing I do is say, hello, what is your name? You're going to tell me your name. Hakeem. Okay. So in this program, I've uh, allocated a particular area of memory on the stack called a buffer. Right. Well, as a program is operating, another thing that it puts in this area of the stack is a pointer that says what it's going to do next. Mm -hmm. So I'm the program. I say, well, um, I'm going to ask him his name, but after I ask him his name, I'm going to tell him his zip code. So I say, um, hello, what is your name? And instead of you saying back, Hakeem, you say back, uh, Hakeem, and I live on 4th Ave, and I have a lot of friends, and give me all your secret data. And that gets overwritten on my stack, and instead of, um, after I ask you your name, instead of going back and saying, okay, now I'm going to tell you your zip code, I say, oh, here's all my secret data. So we talked about what a buffer is in the stack buffer overflow. What is heap? What's the difference? The heap is a more general purpose area of memory. The heap it will be dynamically allocated and used by the program as it's operating. We don't know specifically what's on the heap. There's no common usage of it. There's a buffer on the heap. User data comes in and writes past the end of that buffer. But what's different is on a heap, what's after the end of that buffer. Okay. Uh, sometimes a buffer overflow can have no effect whatsoever. Sometimes an overflow just crashes a computer. Mm. Most people have seen the blue screen of death. Yes, yes. Um, that's typically a result of some type of memory corruption bug. An extension was written in OpenSSL to allow computers to say, hey, are you still there? So we know the server is still up, the connection is still there. So a client can send a packet to the server. The server just repeats that data back to the client. Yes, I'm still here, here's your data. Well, there's a, a length field that comes at the beginning of that data. So the client says, I'm gonna send you 10 bytes, here's your 10 bytes. They go to the server. The server says, oh, you sent me 10 bytes, here's your 10 bytes. There was a vulnerability, an error in the way that was written. So a client could send a packet that said, hey, give me 400 bytes, but it only had 10 bytes on it packet comes in, the server goes, oh, you said you sent me 400 bytes, here's 400 bytes. Here's the 10 you gave me, and then here's 390 bytes of secrets. And it sent that packet back. It's very straightforward and very simple. One of the things that's very interesting and, and very compelling about vulnerability research and exploitation is that creativity and that uniqueness of every vulnerability. Um, researchers, once they find a vulnerability, then they produce what we call a proof of concept, where they actually gain code execution on the machine through using this vulnerability. And the way to do that uh, might be really bizarre, it might be really unique, it might be really difficult to find. I see. So with the Cyber Grand Challenge, DARPA has thrown down the gauntlet and said, we have got to bring software in to solve this problem. We've got to have automated reasoning systems that can respond to threats in real time, but also find these vulnerabilities before the software ever gets fielded in the first place.